desperate for. Desperate for your glory. Desperate for your presence. Desperate for your power. Help me worship him. Sing it from the depth of your heart. Just the voices like an incense to the heavens. Desperate for your presence. I'm lost without you. Hallelujah. Father, this is coming from a heart from hearts that are sincere and true before you. We acknowledge how much we need you and we acknowledge that we are desperate, unashamedly desperate. You have become our life. You have become the source of wisdom. And we give you all the praise. All the praise. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord to visit you in a very unique way tonight. Open your mouth and pray. Visit me, O God. Visit me in a mighty way. Visit me in a mighty way. Visit me in a mighty way tonight. Jesus, let your word come strong. Let it change our lives forever. And let it make us mighty men and women. Amen. God bless you. Please sit down. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everyone. Thank you so much for the sacrifice of being here tonight those following us online we welcome you the overflow thank you so much the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus I'll be sharing a few things tonight and then we'll pray I thought we'll make tonight a prayer meeting but then um, I just have to share a few things but then Let's see how God will grant us grace. And then we'll be able to commit some time to pray tonight. Hallelujah. Just turn to your neighbor and tell them God bless you. Mike said something that was very striking while the worship team were ministering. And he said, Koinonia teaches you that 
you can get many things. But then he said, the highest, paraphrasing the greatest, is God. There are many things that are available in the kingdom. Prosperity is available. Influence is available. All of these great attributes are available. But the highest pursuit, the highest, the apex of your pursuit must be God himself. Hallelujah. When you get to a point where you seek any other thing above God, I don't care what it is. It has become an idol at that exact point. Are we together? So we must be careful and we must guide our pursuits so that at no time are we found consciously or subconsciously pursuing anything that is above God. Every other thing becomes relevant only when the position of God is healthy and secured in your life. When the position of God in your life is threatened by anything, regardless of how legitimate it is, then you're already walking in a danger zone. You must make sure the position of God, please pay attention, is secured beyond disturbance. Secured beyond disturbance. That nothing in life has the capacity to disturb His place in your life. You only become a winner when that is in place. Regardless of what you seek, regardless of what you want, believe me, brothers and sisters, it is totally mundane if it makes God secondary. I don't care what it is. If at any point, any other thing you seek has the capacity to push God and you are not afraid of it pushing God, you are already losing something. God's position must be secured beyond and above contention. Hallelujah. It says, and this is eternal life, to know you, the one true God. This is eternal life, not to have money. Money is important. This is eternal life, not to have anointing. Anointing is important. Right? It's very important to know him, to know him. To know him. Hear what Paul said. That I may know him. It didn't say that we may know him. That I may know him. That's my cry. That's my passion. That I may know him. When a believer loses fire for the pursuit of God, it is the clearest sign that your life is under attack. You don't need to find out whether you are sick or not. The moment you find out that your passion for God is dying, you don't need any other sign. Your life at that point is under serious attack and calls for emergency. Pray this prayer before we continue tonight. And say, Lord, be seated at the throne of my heart. Let it be a position. If anything has threatened your position there, I, I use my will and I secure your position as Lord, as Lord, not occupant, as Lord, not tenant, as Lord, as Lord. Don't be seated in the throne of my heart as a co-occupant, as a co-tenant with something else. Let your position be secured beyond intimidation. Are you praying? It's a very powerful prayer. Very, very powerful prayer. Lord, dismiss the things that threaten your position in my heart. They are not worthy of my life. If they must threaten you to bless me, then they are from the devil. If they must threaten your place in my life to bless me, then they are of the devil. Any desire in my heart that cannot submit to you, I throw it out. I throw it out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
This is a very powerful prayer. This is the reason why people worry. Let me tell you something about worry. Um, come, promise or anybody, come. Do you know? I'm talking about a number of things today, but I just I just felt to start out with this. If this guy is dying of stress, worry, because that's what is happening to some of us. That's what is happening to our families. People move around frowning their faces, no joy, no peace, no fervor. You ask them why and they will tell you, look, life, you know how life is. And they think it is an excuse. Are we together now? Listen, let me teach you something very powerful. Hold on, Mike. Do you know why people worry? The only reason why people worry is because they are obsessed about control and ownership. The only reason why people worry is because they are obsessed about control and ownership. They have an understanding that until they own a thing and they feel the security of that thing around their life, their life is not guaranteed. So they worry. Are we together now? Yeah. They worry. If I transfer... One million naira to your account now. And all of a sudden you start dancing. Watch this. You are dancing because your phone showed you a figure. Are we together now? Watch this. Five minutes before that alert, God already told you, I will bless you. But you are still saying, oh God, I, I know. While God was speaking, you know that money was still available. But because it was not within your possession, you are disturbed about it. Let me tell you something. When you learn to hand over your life to God, are we together? Worry will die a natural death. Which of you, by worry in the Bible says, can add one cubit to his head? You see someone of 20 years looking 45. You ask him why. I say, why won't I worry? Won't I eat? Now, does the worry bring food? One thing I know that does not add anything to your life, anything at all to your life, is worry. It causes stress, causes pain, makes you to get angry. You can just see someone looking blessed and happy and say, so why is he smiling? Just because you are worried. Are we together? Say, I refuse to worry. No. Prophesy to yourself, I refuse to worry. No. Who knows, probably this is already a word for someone. You are killing yourself with too much stress. People are sleeping in the night and the Bible says he gives his beloved sleep. You have refused to receive it. You wake up and sit down and you are just thinking, my life, is this how it will be? See, those kind of thinking are not scriptural. There's nowhere in the Bible that is recommended that people should wake up in the night to worry. You wake up to pray, you wake up to study, you wake up to dance and rejoice before God. The Bible says this. It says... Um, Rejoice in the Lord always and again, in case you've forgotten, I say rejoice. Are we together? Turn and speak to your neighbor and say, worrying will not solve it. Tell them, try rejoicing. One more time, say, worrying will not solve it. It doesn't matter what the problem is, worrying will not solve it. So, try, yes, you try joy. Joy is not laughing like a clown. Joy is a settled, a settled um, confidence, a sense of merriment that comes from understanding that the person you submitted to is responsible. Very responsible. Are we together? You don't take the part that is your own and the part that is God's own and join and kill yourself. His load is not your load. He gave you the, your own part of the deal according to your size. Don't ever wonder how things will happen. The Bible says, the same way you do not know the way of the wind, or how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, so you do not know the way of the Lord. In other words, you don't know how God will make it happen. It's never your business. Your business is to know that God said it, I believe it, I will... No, 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 that doesn't settle it. That doesn't settle it. I believe it. I act because I believe it. By acting, I commit his integrity. Then it settles it. 
reality. You don't say, I believe it and it settled it. How many people have had their lives unsettled because of the... Of course, I understand that those who say it, say it from a very fair point. Believing does not settle it at all. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Where? Not in your life. It takes faith to be settled in your life. Hallelujah. So don't wait until you see things before you are confident. Right now, as you are seated here, God is already speaking to someone to bless you. But if I say it, you won't believe it until you see an alert. If I say God is touching you now, you won't believe it. But when somebody shouts and scatters a chair, you say, wow, something is happening here. It looks like it is powerful, but it's carnality. You must rise to a level where you are governed by your confidence in God's word. You understand? Manifestations are wonderful. But if I tell you God is going to bless you, and you're, okay, where is it? The Bible says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Mm -mm, not just life. Life and what? That's why people worry. There's no peace. No peace in their lives. I will never, never worry about anything. I think, I plan, I take responsibility, but not to worry. Worry does not solve anything. Worry is a sign of unbelief. In fact, truthfully speaking, worry is sin. Are we together? Yeah. What is sin? Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you should. Uh, are we together? Because this one, you are not missing the mark. This one, you are disbelieving God. God said it and you say, God, I don't know what you are talking about, but make it happen now. And God says, me? You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone And right now To the good times and bad You are on your throne You are God alone Hallelujah. Listen I, I, Let me just say this before we go to the discussion of tonight Many people Listen, many people's confidence Are tied to their perception of your joy you, you, you cannot walk around as though I'm not making it or I'm just laughing but I'm not making do you know if I come here frowning and I say we're in trouble do you know how many people will be discouraged just by this look you say ah we're really in trouble oh. no see one of the principles of leadership is that people reflect who you are you have to know this are we together Yes, people reflect who you are. You are an angry person, always frowning as if the whole world is on your head. Very soon you start reproducing yourself. You are going to see a group of very wild and angry people. No. Jesus is alive and he's in control. Hallelujah. The Bible says righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost will characterize the presence of the kingdom. Please avoid worry. I just added your life. I added your age by this little 10 minutes talk. You will want to know how many people die for nothing just because of worry. Where will my school fees come from? Where will my house rent come from? Where will whatever it is come from? When will I buy the car? When will this anointing thing land on my life? I've been praying. Does it take this long? Abba, this thing should have been working by now. You have to believe Him. Hallelujah. Tonight you will be mightily blessed. Mightily blessed in the name of Jesus. I want you to... We are going to pray in tongues for two, three minutes or so. Hold on. I will direct you before we start. Because I want to teach you tonight on spiritual intelligence. And believe me, it will change your life. We will not finish it. We will just continue it as a series. But I want to open your eyes to a lot of things. We have to grow and trust God for capacity. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way... For the way of the Lord is the way of peace. I choose the way. One more time. For the 
by the grace of God is to help us become very spiritual. Very spiritual. Because the Bible says to be spiritual or to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The epicenter of your success and progress in life is your capacity spiritually both in terms of who you are becoming and what you know. When you know God, you are really spiritual. When you understand His ways, you are really spiritual. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Spiritual intelligence. There are a number of things that I'm going to be talking about. Um, it's a discussion, really. We're going to just be talking about a number of things. Um, but the goal is to open our eyes and to cause us to be spiritual to discern the happenings around us and to be able to know how to respond to life accordingly spiritual growth as we have been taught again and again is measured by two parameters parameter number one is how much you are conforming experientially to the image of the Christ the Bible teaches very clearly how that conformity is an index that shows an individual or a people are growing. So if you want to measure whether or not koinonia as a ministry and individuals, if we are growing as individuals, um, first you look at our degree of conformity. That this gentleman started coming for koinonia, for instance, last week. And we are able to measure from last week to this week what has happened in his life. Has his appetite for God been heightened? You know, we had some very um, emotional times yesterday. We had some really lovely discussions and we were just reminiscing on how we all started with God uh, as against some of the veering off that people are having today we discussed how the ministry started and how god has been able to help and um we, we said a lot of very interesting things um back then every night was a project on someone praise god every night you were not trusted if you were not filled with the holy spirit with a personality that can vouch for you. It's not that you just come from nowhere and just say, um, no, 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 no. That time, somebody had to get you born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and there was a community of believers that guided your growth. So the possibilities of varying off was very fine. Very, the, there was an environment of people and then i think one of the things that helped us to grow you may want to learn this is that we had a covenant of accountability i think it's one of the things most people do not have a personal covenant of accountability what that means is that you covenant with your life that you are not going to deafen your ears there has to be someone who is able to challenge you you don't come back home by 11 30 with no explanation and say it doesn't matter no it does it matters covenant of accountability are we together now we look at your life one week you have not prayed to the hearing of anybody you can't say you are meditating for one week your prayer is not to the hearing of it somebody has to ask you are you okay are you sick do you need help so it was very easy even those who didn't want to be serious with God, the plane was moving so fast. There was no way. When people got born again within one week, just one week, their lives would change. Now, of course, we cannot be that meticulous uh, because we are so many now. But I'm saying it is, it is important for you to know how God started with us. The reason why many people don't grow spiritually 
is because they don't follow the formula for growth. They do it haphazardly and carelessly. Praise God. So that's the first index, your conformity. Your conformity. Conformity to Christ. Conformity. Jesus is the reference of what the believer should look like. So when you find out that your growth process is making you look like any other thing outside of Christ, you need to review what you are looking at and what you are listening to. The second parameter for growth is access to light. Light and understanding. Your comprehension, your understanding. Understanding is everything in the kingdom. Understanding is everything in the kingdom. Understanding is what defines the limits of your life and destiny. Please pay attention. Understanding is the reason why you may enjoy a quality of life that is superior or otherwise. Understanding is very, very important. When, when Satan comes into a person's life, he tries to destroy your understanding. Destroy your understanding. That's why you see that we, we emphasize understanding. Hallelujah. We live in a world where many people are largely ignorant of the systems of God. Many people are ignorant of the personalities that are on earth, both spiritual and physical. Many people are in ignorance as to the implications of living and the implications of interacting with our realm. Some years ago, maybe four years or so, five years, four, five years, I preached a message called spiritual perception. And I thought how that your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit must and should be activated and deployed to help sustain your spiritual growth. You must be able to sense the impulses of the spirit to know both the speakings of God and the movement of God. And so God has created provisions within us to help us tap into his speakings and tap into his responses. The, the summation of all those things is what the Bible calls discernment, the capacity to walk in the impulses of the Spirit. Are we together now? Praise God. But most people largely do not have that understanding and um, it has really destroyed our lives. The first thing I want to discuss tonight is the spirituality of life. The first mystery that we want to look at. Everybody write this down. Life is spiritual. Everybody write it down and then we'll say it. Life is spiritual. Say it after me. Life is spiritual. Therefore, living must be spiritual. See, if life is spiritual, then it... No, 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 I'm, I'm talking now. If life is spiritual, then it's foolish to not factor in the realm of the spirit as you attempt to live. Many of us believe life is intellectual. So, we think that the moment you are educated, as, as, as far as we know education to be, the enlightenment, secular enlightenment, we believe we are ready for living. Other people think life is just biological. So the older you grow, you think your growth is qualifying you for living. Are we together? Other people think life is sociological. So the more you know people, you believe you have what it takes to live. But I'm telling you this. Life is spiritual. Find out how many people's destinies have gone in shambles because of their not having this spiritual intelligence that life is spiritual. Everything, brothers and sisters, about life is spiritual. You go back to the book of the beginnings, Genesis, and everything is spiritual. Everything spiritual. In the beginning, the Bible says, God created. Now, that is, that is I tell you, we can dwell weeks just talking about Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, what beginning? God created the heavens and the earth. So where was he? Because he created the heavens. 
He created the earth, meaning he was not in any of those places. Where was he? The Bible calls him dwelling in a place of unapproachable light. Governs the affairs of men from that standpoint. God created, not invented. The earth was not invented. The heavens were not invented. They were created. Created with the intelligence of a superior being. So it's foolish to walk upon the earth wondering if there is a synergy to the happenings of things. Life is spiritual. The earth upon which you walk is spiritual. You as an entity is spiritual. Unfortunately, only witches and wizards know this. Are we together now? Only the people who destroy the destinies of men in villages know this. The average believer is generally aware of the spirituality of life, but has not come into an understanding that one of the keys to spiritual intelligence is to come to terms with the fact that life and everything about it is spiritual. Life and what everything about it no matter how trivial no matter how scientific spiritual hallelujah spiritual when you understand the spirituality of life then all of a sudden you will start seeing a line connecting dots as to the happenings of people's lives. Listen, a man does not just get up and become poor like that. A family does not just get up and not make progress just like that. A man does not just beat his wife just like that. A wife does not just beat her husband just like that. The, the source of that strength requires investigation are we together now a small child does not become so audacious that he looks at his father and says i can kill you no 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 no. The, the source of that audacity has to be investigated life is spiritual a church does not just grow members don't just carry their bibles from different points and start saying let's go to the same place without knowing themselves there's no wire connecting them. You don't just open a shop and everybody from everywhere decides that they want to come to you. No, sir. No, sir. Life is spiritual. You see men moving all around and you do not know what moves them. Spirituality of life. Someone decides to help you, but you show up and something about your life you are not aware of makes the person to drive you away someone promises to marry you even goes to see your parents and all of a sudden introduction has been done he just comes up and says i had a strange dream i can't understand that's not the first time of having a dream but because of that dream you lose out on an opportunity brothers and sisters if you understand that life is spiritual you already without even understanding the native gritties you are already ahead of many people in life i will never treat my life from a scientific perspective no i will never treat ministry from a scientific perspective in the realm of the spirit one plus one is not two you have to define what one is you have to define what two is you have to define what other factors are in the equation we run our life scientifically we run our lives intellectually, sociologically, and we become victims. The book of Job is full of mysteries that open up the reality of the spirituality of life. When you look at the book of Psalms, David opened us to the spirituality of life. When you read Psalm 91, he starts by saying, He that dwells in the secret place. Question, where is that location today? Because David said, a man can dwell here. Have you found it? Where is it? Like an address. David is giving us an address where people can find safety. And he never said a police station. He that dwells somewhere, there is a place a man can stand 
that you become immune. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Then the second shocking thing is shall abide not under the light, under the shadow. What is that? Abide under a shadow? That means your shadow has a spiritual implication. This thing you look at. Li listen, listen, listen. I'm not talking of all this moving around you and let you fall down. That's, I'm talking of something deeper. You know physics just tells us when light is casted on an object, it creates a shadow. That's as far as you know. But the Bible says men can dwell under a man's shadow. <laughs> Do you love Jesus? We love the Bible, right? So, I mean, you are not... The way you are looking at me is as if I'm teaching heresy. It's, it's right in the Bible. Shall abide under... He gives the shadow of God a three-dimensional explanation. You can come under it. Then he says, I will say of the Lord. He is this and that and that and that. Please give it to us, Psalm 91. Let's look at it. Yes, that's the song. Your influence is all over me. Verse 2. And I will say of the Lord, He is my what? Refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will not trust. So let's see why verse 1 and 2 is there. Verse 3. It says, surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Look at all these descriptions. They are descriptions of strange things. You don't see them with your optical eyes, but their effects are as physical as anything. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with what? Stop. Hold on. Describe a man for me with a three-dimensional shadow and has feathers somewhere in his body. Which part of him has feathers? Because he was not just speaking a parable. He says, he shall cover thee with his feathers. <laughs> then and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield. That means in the realm of the spirit, truth is not an information. Truth is a physical reality. It's a shield. You can hold it like I'm holding a tie. Truth is, is, is an object relatable. Are you getting something now? You will be so blessed if you pay attention to what I'm telling you. Five. This is not even this. I just want us to look at it. Just play around it. It says because of all these provisions, this is the only condition where thou shalt not be afraid. Because there is something called terror by night. Everybody say terror by night. No matter how peaceful an environment is, the Bible says once it is night, there is a mystery of darkness and terror. Listen, the Bible says we wrestle not against, against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. Listen, then it says rulers of darkness. They, don't, they cannot rule in light. The moment, he's not talking of spiritual darkness. The moment there is physical darkness, it's a sign they are authorized to come out. Like animals that can only come out in the night. So the Bible calls it terror by night. Yet, it's night time people like. That's why people die in the night. They that drink, drink in the night. When you see a man drinking by seven in the morning, he's, he's a stupid man. Already something is wrong with his life, but that's a, an acute complication. No. Many things happen to people in the night. The destinies of men are exchanged by night. There are men that sit down and discuss. They play the destinies of men like a chess. Terror by night. Not just um, terrorism as we know. Are you aware that there is such provision? Spiritual intelligence. Number one, life. Spiritual. Mm. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. Have you ever seen them? Have you ever seen an arrow living somewhere? But he said there are arrows that fly by day. Only God knows how many people it hits today. Because it flies every day. You get up and leave your house and something happens. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Life is spiritual. Job chapter 1, a meeting was being held in the heavenlies. Satan now comes 
and a conversation is engaged have you considered my servant job while they are discussing that job is on earth minding his business and all of a sudden things begin to nostalgia in job's life it's amazing how many people try to ignore the spirituality of life and expect to rise in life it's impossible it's impossible and more so this is africa you know we just pretend as i'm not talking of witchcraft the portals of africa are open to spirituality it doesn't matter through which force i'm just saying the portals of africa as a continent is richly open have you not heard of men walking back home and a hand slapped them have, have you heard of those kind of things a real three-dimensional hand but they didn't see it you don't have to see it to feel it are we together and the person goes back and all of a sudden one of us showed me a picture of his dad yesterday half of the leg had been eaten you can literally see the bones like that half of it do you know what happened he was sleeping a mystery happened he woke up and all of a sudden that leg physically there are many things you call sicknesses you don't even know where it came from i'm sick you go to the hospital they tell you there is nothing wrong with you they check everything you know the doctor even says stop coming here you are, you are wasting our time but you know you are not feeling fine are we together mysteries that cannot be explained life is spiritual i learned this very early in life the spirituality of life the spirituality of ministry the spirituality of leading when you know this your pursuit for god does not become you know every time you see somebody unusually zealous they just say kai this guy i'm sure you are going to be a pastor or this lady i'm sure god is already grooming you he has isolated you and is grooming you to be a pastor's wife no the key to survival is to become spiritually minded please hear what i'm saying some of our parents right now ignore this and they are paying for it dearly there are mysteries in people's families they do not they do not understand life is everything spiritual when jesus came his birth was spiritual everything about it now look at this for god's sake a woman is minding her business probably imagining what dress will i wear for my wedding all of a sudden a stranger just appears hail mary he didn't even say what is your name ma hail mary in other words we have been watching you your name is mary we know you don't have to tell anyone your name in the realm of the spirit no sir no sir if god ever asks you what is your name is for a reason i mean it doesn't make sense for him to ask you what is your name he wants to change it then that's when he will ask you. yeah in scripture saul paul and all of that but that they are asking you because they want you to supply an information no 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 are we together do you know let me teach you something you can never see a spirit being and be the same whether a demon whether an angel you may never know what happens to you brothers and sisters listen if this is a shrine and you just run by mistake and say oh the wrong place as you never will live the same no it's impossible 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 you thought you ran too fast to be seen the realm of the spirit is not like that please understand what i'm saying if you know this that you are coming for colonia you may be sitting outside you will never feel bad again because you realize that wow this thing is that it's just because we are because of the physical comfort of maybe being inside and all of that but it makes no difference that's why you can be saying god is touching somebody and someone in the second overflow is flying there you that you are close you are now looking at ah, god you mean you jumped me listen the holy spirit does not move with time and distance mm -mm. these two factors don't exist no 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 like you say i have to touch you before touching you that's physics in the realm of the spirit you don't do that are we together are you understanding this 
So you can never see a spirit being. Anybody that tells you he has been having encounters with spirits, I think you should respect that person, whether in a negative way or positive way. That I've had some appreciable, and except if, if the person is lying, if the person is telling the truth, no, you are meeting a dangerous person for good or for bad. Most of the world leaders interact with spirits. Please look at me, let me preach to you. Forget the fact that you see everybody wearing suits and going for forums. They are being advised, counseled, rebuked, directed by strange spirits. There are documentaries upon documentaries on my system that proves to you that no man... Let me teach you something, brothers and sisters. You want to be famous? A day will come, a spirit must show up in your life to say, All right, now that you have gotten to this level, we have to negotiate for it to go further. I give you a guarantee, 100%. If Jesus does not appear to you, an angel sent from God does not appear to you, a demon who are... Somebody... It's, see, it's like a realm. You keep rising. Nobody disturbs you, but you get to a point. They say, okay, everybody that rises from here, right now, the realm of the spirit cannot be strange to such a person. That's why you enter a business meeting. Somebody looks at you. You look at him. Two of you know yourselves. Everybody knows what he has touched or otherwise. There is a level you cannot be neutral. Believe what I'm telling you. When you see people doing some things they are doing, they have seen something. When a woman looks at you and says, I will kill you, mark my words, you better take it seriously. Either pray or stand on the confidence of what you now know. But you say, ah, this is you just, you would really die. Because, you see, let me tell you, there are too many laws that can remove your spirit from your body. Many, many laws, many laws. Not just death. There are many spiritual laws that can separate a man's body from his spirit. Any of them can be manipulated to kill you. You see that? Sickness and accident are physical expressions of the commonest laws that are used to separate people's bodies from their spirits. Like you skin a cow. Have you gone to the abattoir? You see them, they have a skill. They skin a cow. There is a mystery that can remove your spirit from your body. And many people move carelessly. And then it happens. It may happen through a car. It may happen through different things. But it is still a manifestation of this. You cannot sit on certain positions being neutral. It's impossible. I remember one of our friends years ago. He got a job, and I remember him saying, they were paying them, them that were struggling, they were paying them 50000 and they were paying the prophets 1.2. Now, they don't call it salary, they call it honorarium, but it's still a release of something from the giver to the person who needs it. They pay you 50000 for laborious study of 5-6 years, under the most stringent conditions possible, and somebody just throws and comes in. And they give the person 1.2. You know why? Because that person has an advantage. He can do something. Hi! Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. I don't have to see you to talk to you. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. People's lives are being manipulated without their will. Life is spiritual. Many of us were born in pure Christian families. We never had any touch with idolatry. So you don't understand the spirituality of life. But for a few people who veered off here and there, did one or two things, life is spiritual. Grandparents just come out and sit on the ground. And after a few minutes, they stand up. They say, it's alright, it will be well with you. Go. And you are saying, what did they see? Life is spiritual. In the Bible, before they fought wars, they will go and ask the kings and prophets, please, will we win? And then they will say, there's trouble. Oh. And then they will say, how can we change it? Now, this is the part of spirituality that shocks me. The ability to change things. Change things by the Spirit. Like a cleaner. I look and I find out that this is supposed to happen. Then you clean it as if there's nothing there. 
happen. Oh, you were supposed to die tomorrow. Then somebody just claims it. What advantage do you have? Do you understand that your life is spiritual? When you sit down in that class, do you know that it's not just one person sitting down? Life is spiritual. Now, the, it's not to just make us irresponsible and just see demons in everything. When I talk of the spirituality of life, I'm not just talking about demons. I'm talking about the presence of spirits to guarantee anything happening. You, the concept of being an atheist is another class of deception. Life is very spiritual. You see a lot of people come to dig a well. After they dig a well, the water comes out. They will tell you, go and look for chicken. Has that happened to you? Go and look for chicken. They slaughter the chicken and make incantations in the well and the water will never stop coming. Think about that. Do you know the water on earth is older than everybody on earth now? I hope you know that. The water on earth is older than everybody on earth. You are not drinking a person. You are not drinking a substance. You are drinking history. This was only bottled. Only God knows who laid hands on this water. Could it be part of Noah's flood? Could it be? You just know you are just swallowing it and then your body just reacts. You take something and all of a sudden your body reacts. I'm comfortable. Koinonia, listen, listen, listen. Let me teach you these things. If you do not understand it, don't be great. Just get a one room apartment, get married, have two or three children, be a kingdom financier, and wait for the day you'll be with the Lord. But that you want to rise in this world we live in. No. We're traveling to Benin Republic. I think I told, when we got somewhere, a man, one Lenge guy, very Lenge guy, just looking, like all these smokers. He looked at me and he called my name, Joshua. You've seen them now. You see them in markets. They look at you and in five minutes they start giving word of knowledge. You've not seen those kind of people. They look at you and say, Madam, uh -uh, why, is, uh, why is, is, is Joshua stubborn like this now? He said, don't disturb me, but because they mentioned Joshua, I say, who? <laughs> say again. Life is spiritual. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written. It is written. I just appeared, but something has been written. A script. A script about your life. Written. When you understand the spirituality of life, then you also know that you have an advantage by the Spirit to manipulate things to be consistent with the Word of God in your life. This is, the this is where I'm taking you to. When I understand that life is spiritual, I don't mourn at physical results because I know that there is a loop through the Spirit where things can be corrected. Are you seeing that now? At that point, I stop worrying. Shabbat Kosaya. Because I know there is an advantage. The advantage is my access. My access to spirituality. I can be assisted by a spirit being. In this case, the Holy Spirit. Listen. One of my best scriptures in the Bible is, Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. A beast of a man just came and said, If you don't tell me my dream and the solution, I will kill you. And he said, King, don't be hasty. Don't worry. Let's just go and sleep. While other people were sleeping, he knew... That something happens to men at night. The night is also a time for revelation. Listen, you try praying in the night and try praying in the day. If you pray seriously, come and tell me the difference. Come and tell me the difference. This, is, this, this, one, I, this one is like my office. I can tell you everything you want to know about it. The night time, I have sought out the mysteries of the night in a very strange way. The Magi came out and they saw a star and they started smiling. They said a king is born. Not a child. A king is born. And they started going. When they met Herod, they said, um, we came from the east. Based on our study, we have books here 
prophesying and a physical star because in Genesis chapter 1 he said he made the stars to signify times and seasons times, seasons hallelujah so they looked at it and then it led them to the place and when they got there they saw a baby but because they knew that it was not a baby they started worshipping him if, I, if you are worshipping a Jimmy's child, won't somebody know that they say you, they want to kill your child, a Jimmy? But now, two, three, or well, the Bible doesn't say three men. But we know Magi came from the east. And they are worshipping someone because they are seeing more than that. And all of a sudden, an angel appears and says, run away with this child. They want to kill him. Run quickly. Do you know why? Because Jesus could die. Did you hear what I said? The angel would not waste his time and say, run away with that child if he could not die. He could die. If, he, if they disobeyed that angel, they would have killed him. The only thing is the body would not decay. But he would die. Yeah, he would die. Are we together? When Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, Satan was waiting. Very strange. Immediately he finished, he just showed up. Now watch this. If the devil is near you, won't you drive him? But hear him, he's walking with Jesus. Satan, walking with Jesus. Please, come. You are not the devil in Jesus' name. Say amen. But watch this. I'm minding my business. And somebody appears and I look and say, Satan, you again. Think about that. This is what happened in your Bible. And he said, ah, Jesus, you are hungry. Turn this stone into bread. And then he said, it is written. And he didn't disappear. He didn't go. He continued with another temptation. He said, Jesus, follow me. Let me show you something. And Jesus followed him. Your Bible. They went up the mountain. He said, look at all the glories of the earth. Hold on. Where is that mountain where a man can stand and see the glories of the world at once? Is it Mount Everest? It's a mystery. These guys just came out of the physical realm into the realm of the spirit and said, Stand, I show you all the kings I have empowered. This is it. Like a window, like you just step out into a door and show Jesus all the glories. He said, If you bow to me, I will give you. If you bow to me, that is the mystery of the wealth of sinners. If you bow to me, I will give you. Satan does not need money. He needs your bowing. If you bow to me, I will give you. So when you say you want to be blessed and not bow, uh -uh, he says, no, you can't eat your cake and have it. Your allegiance, and then I give you every other thing. And you say, no, I will have it. Are you seeing? So you just get up and say, why are Christians not getting jobs? Now you understand. He took him and showed him the system. Bow to me. So you want a job, but you don't want to bow to him. You must find out what provision has been made. Because Jesus conquered him. Then he now took him up a cliff. And he said, jump down. He said, he shall put his angels charge over you. Look at Satan quoting scriptures. The guy you call Satan. By the way, let's not, it's not that we are talking about Satan. But do you really know who he is? Look up please. Are you getting blessed? Am I boring you tonight? Who exactly is Satan? A guy with a horn? As Nigerian film has depicted? No. That's just to help you understand. Who exactly is Satan? Because according to scripture, we see that Satan is a person. He can be at a... Satan is not omniscient. Not all-knowing. The ignorance of Satan is clear from Genesis to Revelation. There are many things he did not know. Are we together? Number two, Satan is not omnipresent. Many times he's at a spot. He can't be everywhere. He's focusing on the issues that are most important. Question three, is Satan down, up, or where? Where does he live now, today? Because when we say down, down Satan, up, up Jesus, none of them is living up or down. That's not the address of any of them. 
it's not the address of any of them. You go up, I guarantee you, you are not going to see anything there. You see that? Because I hope you know that this, our realm, is suspended in space. Space that even scientists don't know. There is no reference to measure where we are at now. And it was concealed by the wisdom of God. You can't, you can't tell whether we're in the middle. What, where exactly are we? You call this solid. You are standing here now, but you are floating and moving around. Think about it. Yet the Bible says it has foundations. The earth, your earth. Jesus himself, or well, God speaking now, told Job that the earth has foundations. Who is Satan? Why does he make you afraid? Please look at me. Let, let somebody be delivered now. Who is that guy that threatens the whole world? Where is he now? If you call him, will he come? Are we together now? Do you know there was a time in the civilization of God's kingdom where Satan was not there? He was not even created. I hope you know. Satan has a creation date. He was not born, so he was created. Are we together now? Let me shock you. Number two, I hope you know Satan is not the most dangerous of spirits. Evil spirits now. No. Of course. The Bible never teaches that. That Satan is the most dangerous of the spirits? No. There are spirits currently now that were bound in everlasting chains. Now, as I speak, they could not be released because even the elect, if they are released, they may not stand them. Now, as I speak, there are spirits bound. But Satan is going to and fro. He's not part of them. I want you to understand this. You see, you disarm darkness when you have light. You disarm darkness when you have light. All through scripture, we see that demons can be told what to do and they can be told where to go. And under certain conditions, they must obey. Are we together now? So how does Satan carry out the advancement of all of these things? How does he do that? You see somebody who minds his business and you begin to pray for him. He's manifesting the power of God is upon him and he's vomiting something physical. Vomiting razor, vomiting this and that. Now that's an ugly scene, frankly speaking. But I mean, it's a shock. I've counseled so many people. I remember one gentleman who said they, their father took all of them for protection. After making incisions on them, God is my witness. They gave all of them two-two razor blade, physical sharp razor blade. The man said, just close your eyes and eat it. The guy said, are you joking? This is razor. And they said they threw it in their mouth and they were shocked. They didn't wound them, they didn't do anything. It disappeared. Nobody swallowed their own. Now, when a razor disappears in your mouth, you have to find out where it went to. Say after me, life is spiritual. There are people who end their salaries. Their physical money disappears. I'm not saying sickness took it. You kept 20 naira, you come and find 15 naira. Yet you are alone in the room. There are individuals that have strange visitations by men, women. Strange beings in the night. A spirit comes and then comes to sleep with you. Or do certain things. And you get up with all kinds of things. You have a dream that there was an incision. You wake up physically with a mark with blood. Was that, was that just a, was that a story? A spirit having an affair with you in a dream? Because spirits are neither male nor female. You understand? So there is no reason why you should be having that. Let me explain to you the mysteries behind people's lives that they don't know. Pay attention to what I'm saying. We live in a world that you must have spiritual intelligence. There are four things I'm talking about. Maybe I'll just take this one today. Because I can dwell here and explain to you the mystery behind the happenings of people. Just like that. 
Life is spiritual. All of a sudden, in three weeks, promise, men start coming to your life to favor you. Where were they? What happened before that they didn't come? Somebody spoke to you. He didn't give you money. He just spoke to you. You didn't see anything leaving him. It's not even that his saliva touched you. He just said something to you and you left. Believing you carried something. And you come out and people start treating you in a certain way. Say after me, life is spiritual. You had the testimony of that dear lady about the favor. How many of you have been crying and your helpers are next door, but they cannot speak to you. But all of a sudden, something happens and you begin to see people arise for you. Life is spiritual. Every one of you seated here, as many as you are, look at people standing outside. And I say this with all humility. Human beings are not idiots. Nobody comes to stand outside in the cold and just watch him because he's trying to... What is so special about the man of God? Everyone say life is spiritual. It's not just poster. It's not just balloons. There are mysteries. Do you know sometimes I watch people... When I come for Kornani and I see people sit down, I know that the spirit realm brought them. Even them, they are surprised. What am I doing here? Yet you are still coming. Spiritual. Are we together? When a lady gets married and all of a sudden her womb closes. Watch this. What is Satan looking for? Why is her womb closing? She goes to the hospital. The doctor says, you are fine. We've checked you, you are okay. Or God, we checked you, you are okay. But then the child does not come. At all. Two years, three years, five years, the child does not come. And then all of a sudden, they begin to have problems. Husband and wife. And then everything scatters. Are we together? And then watch this. That same woman will live in defiance. And go and have an affair with another man and get pregnant instantly. Instanter. That means it was never about anything wrong with her. There are people who have seen people, have prayed for people with HIV. It's not that they lived a careless life. No, no. I remember a testimony, I don't know if it was shared, that was shared. Someone went to bed in the night. All of a sudden, a stranger appeared. Held syringe and told the person, this thing inside it is HIV. Injected the person, he woke up physically with HIV. Is there any amount of antiretroviral drug that will heal that person? If the sickness came from the realm of the spirit, medicine can only manage it. The real cure, the real cure will come from the realm of the spirit. Are we together? Families in disarray because they do not understand that life is spiritual. There are people who will be driving, driving, going to their place of work. At top speed, the car will just lock. Lock in one position. I've spoken with many people who had accidents. You ask them what happened. They tell you, I tried to turn the steering. I'm not a careless driver. I did my best. I was watching myself dying. You know, I've seen the spirit of death. I know it. It knows me. I've seen the spirit of death. So I know what I'm telling you. It comes to hospitals in the night. Patients in wards. And all of a sudden, hovers round. And all of a sudden, people just leave. And in the morning, you come and find out so-so person is dead. There are times it will come over territories. Like a city, like Zaria, like this. It will just come. It's invoked by powers. They do incantations and invoke it. It can loom around a territory for three weeks. And there are ghastly motor accidents, headache, killing men. A pastor just standing on stage preaching and he will collapse and die. And then after a while, when the invocation has fulfilled its reason for coming, it quietly leaves. You see it happen. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and we cast you are mighty on your 
You reign, you reign, shen Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Abraham, Abraham is returning from war. And all of a sudden, a strange man appears. The Bible says, no father, no mother. What kind of a man is that? Melchizedek just shows up and says, Abraham, you don't know me, but I am a king. A king of where? I've never heard about you. You are a king. Listen. Listen. The earth is not the only place that has kings. Melchizedek said, I am a king. Of where? Salem. An ancient city of peace. Then he looks at Abraham and said, I'm on assignment. Abraham gives him a tithe of all. And he says, Abraham, I want to activate something in your life. Blessed be Abraham, possessor of the most high, possessor of the heavens and the earth. Listen, you never see Melchizedek in the Bible again. The next time Melchizedek shows up is in Jesus. Hold on. The Bible now calls him a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Read your Bible and see the strangers that met with men that we never saw again. Never saw again. Never saw again. There are men who started churches. When the churches started growing, one time all of a sudden spirits just appeared to them. I'm the power that controls this territory. We can negotiate all this. Bishop Oedeko shared and said how that it, the Kaduna church was not growing. Still anointed. Still with power. The Kaduna church was not growing. And all of a sudden, he said one time they were fasting and praying. Say life is spiritual. And all of a sudden, he came out and the Holy Ghost asked him to come out. He said, look. And he looked and he saw a dark veil. Dark veil covering the people. He said, this is the veil that misinterprets what I am doing misinterprets it and he commanded it and it leaves he just left like that and all of a sudden members started coming what is the relationship between members and this have you not heard of people who want name kings and they bury their children correct they bury people alive and you just get up and come to fight them you die for nothing i was in mina last week and one of us the media person met me and then you know talking about the security situation around and he said something he said a particular village when there was war about to happen in a particular village that the people there said no problem that the people just carried their charms and came and lined it in front of the village mysterious substances started killing the armies one of them something ate his hand you don't know what it is those people they have it when the going gets tough they bring it out Are you aware that life is spiritual? Are you aware that your life is spiritual? When you know this, it should not make you afraid. It should give you the key to changing anything. When you know that life is spiritual, you will value prayer. Because you will know that when you pray, among many other things, you are changing things. You are shifting things in the realm of the spirit. My life today... It's a product of this singular revelation. Life is spiritual. You never see me sit down and I'm just discussing physical things with people. I may keep quiet and nod, but I am reading between the lines. And when I get it, I say, oh, that's it. We know what the problem is. Listen, Koinonia, let me tell you the relevance of this understanding. You never will try to fight physical people again. If your roommate is fighting you all the time, know that life is spiritual. Fighting your roommate is when you finish praying, you find out that they are behaving haywire. Don't you know that there is a spirit that was watching while you are praying? And now you are coming. All of a sudden, they will pour water on your bed. Because anger is a gateway in the realm of the spirit. So the devil will try to rob you from joy. Joy. With joy shall you draw. That's why you finish praying and your father insults you. That's why as you are living from Koinonia, you receive hostilities from people. 
when you know that life is spiritual, you will stop being angry. And you will stop wasting your time. Let me tell you how many of us have aborted prophecy. You don't know that life is spiritual. The moment a miracle is about to come, that's when you hear stories that five people said about you. Satan is moving through men. Moving through men. The moment there is a breakthrough, did you hear this about Pastor Jakes? And then you are bitter. And then you are angry and the demon says, praise God. This is exactly what we are looking for. And all of a sudden, the prophecy is aborted. Like a woman pregnant. But there are those who understand this. And the moment they are looking at you, you say, no, no, I know it's not you. You are just a victim of the realm of the spirit. So I ignore them and I keep dancing my way to joy. Listen, when Jesus was going to enter a city, do you know how he said we should enter? He sat down on a horse and said, people, praise and sing. If Jesus entered that city silently, something dangerous would have happened. He listened. Do you know joy and laughter are weapons in the spirit? Look at me. Look at me. Let me share something with you. Sam, if you are talking to all of us now and we start laughing and scorning you, what happens to you? Talk to me. Do you know if I am angry at promise, my joy is to see him angry. When he's angry, then what I have done to make him angry is working. But when you see somebody that you are praying that something bad happens to him, always happy and joyful, it will disarm you. The Bible says, why do the hidden rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. Listen, the kings of the earth, they set themselves, right, against God as his anointed. Then he says, he that sits on the throne, hold on. It didn't say he will fight first. The first thing that happens. <laughs> Laughter is an expression of joy. Hold on, hold on. That's why when people are under the anointing, sometimes you see them laughing hysterically. Now, you are not spiritual, so you just think, which kind of men of God are these? That's serious breakthrough happening to them in the realm of the spirit. There are people under the anointing, you see them start dancing. I'm not talking of, they can't even control themselves. Dancing. And you may not understand. When they were going to take the ark back, there was a formula. It was always with singing and dancing. I was, I was sharing with you, Jimmy. I will just share it to help you. I, I think it was um, um, yesterday we were talking. I got up in the morning about to pray. And the Lord said, no, you are not going to pray. You are going to dance before me. Two hours stretch, non-stop. That's all I did. All I did. I was so tired. I, I said, wait, wait, which, which style now am I going to? I mean, what is all this? But I knew I'm smart enough to know life is spiritual. Listen, listen. That two hours may be equivalent to 15 years breakthrough. Two hours. You reign, you ancient Zion, King Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Joshua chapter 1, 2, 3 They survey Jericho And all of a sudden He says walk around Don't talk, just walk around What is the stupidity Of walking around Life is spiritual You call it madness A man is walking around once And then he says on the seventh day Hold on, listen The Bible says The fence of Jericho Five chariots could stand on it so even if you turn it it will still become another fence are we together there are people who are too big for breakthrough they are too they are, they are, they are, they are too carnal and scientific for the stupidity that spirituality requires life is spiritual they move around the seven times the moment they got there, he said, Now, Tejila, don't fight, shout, shout. And the Bible says, When they shouted, listen, listen, hold on, hold on, hear me. Sometimes, sometimes you hear people say, Give God a shout, or sometimes you see about to minister, and I tell you, you are going to shout the name Jesus. 
you may think they are just formulas stupidly you see this is they, once your mind if you allow people who are depraved and don't know god they will rubbish your breakthrough they will say what are you doing what what are you saying same thing with praying in tongues you are praying in tongues and someone sees you and say you too you are in this thing you are doing this thing too ah! you too you are you are joining them at your age you went to school listen listen i tell you i have mastered how to destroy jericho in my life I know the principles. Life is spiritual. When I found this key, I stopped wasting my time. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you how to come out of any trouble in your life. Should I tell you? Listen. After you finish praying, listen. I want you to laugh and dance. Dance is a strange mystery of deliverance. Strange mystery. Believe what I'm telling you. Dance is a strange mystery of deliverance. Dr. Kenneth Copeland asked Bishop Oyedeko and said, you claim we taught you faith. But how come you are able to pack over 50,000 people for services? And Oyedeko said, I dance every one of those people to church. See, listen, there is a time to pray, but there is a time to engage other things. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible calls it the sacrifice of praise. It didn't say the music of praise. It's a sacrifice. It will cost you, but it will tear your heavens open. Listen, you have not seen breakthrough till you know how to rejoice before God. There's nothing I know that paralyzes Satan like an expression of praise and joy. It's one of the seven mysteries God revealed to me. Seven mysteries. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me show you how men have commanded victory in their lives. When you don't know the key and you don't know that life is spiritual, you will waste your time. Cheap victories, you will never get it. I remember a woman who shared a testimony. Um, she was barren and then she started bleeding. She, she took him and then she started bleeding. And she went to a man of God who happened to be a doctor. True story. And the man said, Ah, Madam, Todd, right now, honestly, this, this thing, of course, you know what that means. It's, it's over. Just trust God for grace. And the woman said, No. I know what my Bible says. The man said, Well, you know I'm a pastor, but I'm also a medical practitioner. When he finished everything, the woman said she did. Do you know what they said? Dancing vigil. Not, not you put vigil and put songs. And you are, she said she danced her way and that child returned from wherever he was. Listen, if you don't believe what I'm telling you, honestly, you can go home. Cornonia has finished for you this night so that you don't waste your time. You are too big to engage these mysteries. Some things will never happen in your life. Never happen. Hallelujah. There are mysteries. When the devil wants to get your life, he will use men. Listen, Every time you start seeing strange attacks, it's a sign that something is about to drop. Be careful. Be sensitive. Bitterness will start coming. Are we together now? Betrayal will come. All kinds of things. They are demon spirits, desperate, trying to use men to look for access to sabotage. And that's why you joy, 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 rejoicing, dancing. All these things distract you till the miracle comes. Find a man who has refused to get angry. I show you a winner. I show you a winner. A winner. Some of you, all this, I'm like that. You will never rise beyond certain levels. In our family, we are like that. If I'm angry, should I not say it? Apostle, I'm a human being. You will sit there as a human being and die like mere men. Mysteries. This life is spiritual. You are looking for rent. And the rent has refused to come. Do you know there are times in your life there is nothing about you that can bring that miracle. You are not expecting money from anybody. There is no hope of anything coming. Those are the times you engage this. You don't go around just saying, Sir, the other day I spoke to you, I'm still here. Or is it that you are not seeing me? No. Let God talk to them. You talk to God. You engage the mysteries 
and while you are dancing like a mad person, do you know there are people between now and Friday, you will see the strange testimonies that will come in your life if you understand that life is spiritual. This is the foolishness some of us have adopted. Oh, we have been stupid enough to do it. And God has proven himself in a very dangerous way. When we were going for crusade, remember when our car stopped. Let me give you a real testimony. The car refused to move. They kicked it. It did not move. Remember, we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. They kicked it. All of a sudden, we were tired. Everybody was discouraged. Steve Strings just took the guitar and started playing. That was how we started singing. There are witnesses. We kicked that car. It started till we got to the crusade ground. When you understand that life is spiritual, you will know that it's not about your roommate. This, this is the only way to love people. So there's somebody now that you are bitter against, but you are turning your attention to the wrong person and you are giving access to spirits. The devil expects you to see promise. Promise, come, pass this way. And you just pass like that, pulling your mouth. And the devil says, this is exactly what I, I mean. I like these kind of people. They are like robots. Anything we want, they do. But the moment you are passing and he's pulling his face, and how are you? Ah, that's it. You disarm. It's a little act. But you disarm principalities and powers. Because life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Your breakthrough is spiritual. Your husband is spiritual. Your wife, spiritual. Your baby, everything. Your exams, spiritual. Listen. 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 I'm not saying you should not read. Listen. But I'm, listen, let me tell you the truth. Hear me. Hear me. Listen. 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 Let me tell you something. No matter who you are, a day will come you will sit down and look at that paper. And you will know only God can help me. There is a key. Let me tell you what students do after exams. And let, that's why many people fail. They come out and then they go to somebody. There's usually somebody saying, what did you write here? Don't, don't do that thing. When you come out, walk away. Don't, I put five. You say you put eleven. They say, how did it become eleven? You didn't even put six. You have failed. The answer is five. Now, let me tell you what that, I'm not saying you should criticize people. Are you getting my point? When that happens to your spirit... All of a sudden, you go back and say, my God, this is it. It's over for me. My whole life has finished. You are helping the demons prophesy to yourself. You are helping to speak. Whereas, somebody else will know that honestly. It's not that I'm saying you should be lazy. But brothers and sisters, of what use is the spirit if there's no advantage? In the spirit there is an advantage. We are not idiots. Believe me. You dance an angel to your faculty. You dance an angel to your department. You dance an angel to open your file. Come on now. Dance your way to the admission list. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please believe what I'm saying. This is only one over four. I came tonight to open your eyes. Stop interpreting the happenings in your life. They, they threw you out of the job. Don't sit there and say, Kai, but these people, even my uncle, my uncle, you, you saw me. It's not about your uncle. There's something you can do about it. Stop calling home to listen to bad news. After you listen, close it and say, Lord, I still see what you are doing. I still see what you are doing. Are we together? You hear a word and they say, by the grace of God, your husband is coming. All of a sudden, things begin to happen around you. Somebody just comes and says, you say, why are you putting this marriage sin on your head? And all of a sudden, you feel ashamed, you feel embarrassed. When a prophecy is coming, you can't even lift your hands to receive it because you are saying they are seeing me. They think I'm desperate for marriage. They rob you of your joy. They rob you of your peace. You never get your miracle. Once you sit down, then the devil uses anger. You now sit down, you are talking about other people's relationship and marriage. Tearing people down and sowing a seed that will have a boomerang effect on you. Because life is spiritual. Hear what Proverbs says. It says, be careful as you speak for the birds will carry your words. Have you seen those birds before? The birds will carry your words.
My life is spiritual. My life is spiritual. I cannot stop anybody from carrying charm, but I can stop it from touching me. I know what to do. I know what to do. I can't stop the spirit of death from standing on the road, oh Kai. But there is something. There is something that even if it's the devil that drives, he will drive me safely. These are not these are not empty talks. This is what dominion is all about. I'm training you. I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. From now, when you walk out of this place, for some of you right now, there is a text message, a heavy insult waiting for you to read. Now, hold on. You now know that you don't just turn and call people devils, but you just enter and your roommate, who right now as you are here, they are talking about you, and the Lord tells you, should I tell you how to win? Buy five for life. Go and drop it and say, people, this is for you. And you are saying, ah, ah, God, to be that much of an idiot. No, somebody that did this is this lady that stopped me from marrying. She said something bad to one good military man who would have married me. And God says, buy malt, a carton of malt, and go and greet her. Or God will say, wash their plates. I know they dirtied your bed. She just changes, sing praises, and wash your plates. Listen, when you disarm powers, you will see God rise in a fearful way. Are we together? Bitterness, anger, envy are more wicked than, than anything you can think about. They destroy you. They are like a cancer that sabotages you. Many of our parents, you know why they may never prosper? They are angry at everybody. There are people now, if they see me coming, I see people frown. Oh, is he the guy? That's him. How are they getting money? Look at these this, this young boys. And so the angel, the grace for the blessing is authorized to live your life. Because anything you don't honor cannot be your inheritance. Are we together now? What are they? Be careful, oh, all these young guys standing. How can people be standing outside? Are you worshipping a man? Are you foolish? Don't castigate anybody, but just know that those are joy robbers. The moment they start speaking, know that con- your blessing has left heaven and it's about to come and land in your life. Are we together? Life is spiritual. Let me just narrow it down so that we can pray. The mystery of praise in a dance. In a dance. You hear me talking about this dancing thing. I'm not a dancer. You don't have to be a dancer. But if you want to move forward, you dance anyhow to your breakthrough. Anyhow. You are too big to dance your way to breakthrough. I tell you, you are too big to have an open heavens. It will never, never open. Ask David. David the king. The custodian of mysteries. When he was dancing and rejoicing, his arrogant wife came and said, what is this? I'm not saying you should dance in a nude and an ungodly way. I don't know David's dance, but I know the dance that is not David's dance. Let me balance it quickly. I, I was not there with David, but I know the dance that is not David's dance. There are many dance around that is not David's dance. Are we together? David's dance comes from a genuine heart. Not a heart of seduction and stupidity. David's dance is a genuine heart that is focused on God, directed to him. So let's, we are talking about David's dance here. David was dancing and the wife, who was too big, now came and said, what is this thing you are doing? You are a king. And David said, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know I was in the wilderness. Do you know what happened from there? The wilderness that brought me here. And I'm dancing, and you don't know that I got you by dancing. Of course. It's a mystery I've been practicing. You are Saul's daughter. You don't even know how you just came like that. You came as an inheritance. The Bible may not record it, but I believe he finished his dance and carried his sling and went to Goliath. And said, have you done your own dance, Goliath? Because if you have not done it, you are about to go down. Hallelujah. I believe in the mystery of praise. Please hear me. The mystery of praise. Psalms 149, give it to us. One of the mysteries will touch this night. Because this is a year of triumph. 
And I will be wicked if I don't share with you the secrets I operate in my own life. Psalms 149, please. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Listen. And praise Him in the congregation of saints. Verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in Him that had made Him. Let the children of Zion be what? In who? Their king. 3. Let them praise His name. What? Let them praise His name in a dance. Let them sing praises to Him with timbrel and harp. 4. We are reading down. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will do what? Beautify those who are humble enough. He will beautify them with salvation. Next verse. Let the saints do what? Be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their... Listen, hold on. Just stay there. Let me explain this to you. It says while you are lowing down. And all of a sudden, do you know it's when people lie down that the devil brings thoughts. I hope you know the bill is still there. And all of a sudden, oh Lord, you are good. Shabaratokanya. I know you are faithful. I know you are faithful. Let the, even on their bed. Verse 6. Now here is the warfare dimension of praise. He said, let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword in their hands. Next verse. To execute what? Vengeance upon the hidden. And punishment upon the people. Not by chasing them. That while you are praising and dancing. It is vengeance you are speaking in the camp of the enemy. To bind their kings with chains. And their nobles with fetters of iron. There is something called the written judgment. To execute upon them what? Hold on. How do you execute it? Your own is to mind your business knowing that life is spiritual. I know they said you are not from so 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 tribe. They walk together and sack you. Don't go telling people to hate these people. Go to your secret place and start praising. And see what happens in that office. Are we together? It says this honor have how many? The honor ex of expressing breakthrough. There are some things that God gave apostles, prophets, teachers, but he said this one, this honor of experiencing breakthrough have all the saints. Praise ye the Lord. Chief victories. Chief victories by understanding life is spiritual and you carry all let me tell you another mystery carry all your challenges write it on a paper and dance before it put it on the ground and celebrate god before it like a madman don't worry just be that stupid and see what happens a child is not coming i know that me for sure i'm getting zero in this and that and begin to celebrate him celebrate him People will look at you and say, what are you doing? I'm praising him. Why? What did he do? No testimony. You are start doing all these church things that people do like fools. You're married, you go and lock you and your wife and tell yourself, we are dancing our next level. When Jesus was entering the city, what did he do? Sat down on a donkey and had people praising and rejoicing. It was that atmosphere. It says Psalm 100, please. Psalm 100. Someone's life is about to change. It says, make a joyful noise. Hold on. Are you seeing another mystery? Joyful what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Praise the Lord. Listen. Listen, he didn't say make noise. Making noise is not good, even for your health. He said a joyful noise. Hold on. Do you know what a joyful noise is? The revelation behind it. I'm not just shouting as an idiot. I'm showing you mysteries now. Praising a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Verse 2. Serve him with gladness. Look at how many times God talks about this. 
What is the protocol for accessing his presence? Come before his presence with not with mourning. Hold on. Oh God. I thought the other time, what? don't give me any dream again. If I keep seeing money in my dream, and yet nobody sends me any alert. Are you not the God of heaven? I've been serving in Koinonia. Let me tell you what you are doing. You are just moving backward. Believe me. Believe me. You are moving backward. Because a, a broken spirit dryeth the bones. Verse 3. Know that the Lord he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. So have this revelation. He said we are the sheep of his pastures. He will not deny you anything. There's too much gloominess and mourning. That's why I, I listen to the news just for the purpose of leadership. But ask anybody who knows me. I have no time listening to all this analysis and all this junk. This and that is happening. Uh, this and that. Dollar is one million to this. I don't know what happened. No, but all I know is that for with joy shall you draw from the wells of salvation. Praise the Lord. If God calls this year a year of triumph, you must stop acting like mere men. They can predict your life. They know when money is missing from your life. Your face will show it. Anybody in this room that took what doesn't belong to him, except I'm not a member of Koinonia, you think you are being spiritual, but that's not how to disarm powers. Strange principles that will lift. I'm telling you, this principle of praise with a dance and a shout of praise is, I, permit me to use the word, a wicked principle. You want to see speed in your life? Do this and see what happens. Make up your mind. Complaining. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may be called blameless children of God. Right? The world is full of angry people. Do you know the classic sign that someone needs deliverance is anger? Anger. Offense. Everything offends you. Right now, after Koinonia, they say turn and hug somebody. You just turn and found out that they left you alone. That alone is enough to bring anger. Are you not my partner? Why are you turning to the other person? You are trying to say I'm not good enough. You are giving the devil. Hold on, don't laugh. You are giving the devil access. I choose to be a happy person now. You come, I'm, I'm, I'm a joyous, joyous, joyous. He said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, again, I repeat it. Koinonia, hear me. Many people will laugh at what you are doing. But they will not deny the result. The result will be strange. I guarantee you. I don't share my testimonies again so that it will not be as if I'm coming to Koinonia and all I'm saying. But there are things I will share with you you will not be able to sleep that were gotten on the platform of engaging these mysteries. Let me tell you another strange thing. The spirit of prophecy, the spirit of prophecy works with three things. One, a joyful noise. Listen, you can never, never walk in the prophetic without joy. The spirit, the spirit, the true spirit of prophecy works with joy. But I see angry people who say they are prophets, it's a joke. The spirit of prophecy. Let me tell you, most people who do different religions, do you know how they invoke the anointing upon mediums? They play instruments, they do music. You've seen masquerades. They are moving, playing with fire, somebody jumping on somebody, and then they reach a crescendo. When a spirit lands on the head of whoever is the medium, and all of a sudden he starts prophesying. Are we together? The prophet said, bring me a mystery. And as he began to play the mystery, he said, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And then he began to prophesy. You shall not see wind, you shall not see rain, but the valley. Now that strange breakthrough, no rain, no wind, but the valley filled with water. Are we together? I'm telling you, I, have, if I believe with all my heart that I have fast-tracked somebody's life now with this revelation. With this revelation. Call your parents. All this complaint. All this complaint. My daughter, 
when will you marry now? Is it that there are no men in Colonia? Is it that you are sitting outside? Eh? You, don't, you are not serving in any department. You, you think I don't know what people say all around? This is just nonsense. You can be in the third overflow, dancing your destiny, and somebody seated here, eh? God will force him to go and do something outside and see his destiny there. So it's not, it's not about all these games that people play. No. The favor of God can come upon your life. You step into the office. Your director did not intend talking to you. But you say, um, okay. She was not in that list. It's her name there. Please, add it. You people should come and see me. See, even me, Joshua Selman, there are people who have helped that I didn't, I didn't plan to. I just saw the joy and the ecstasy. No, 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 frown and come and see if I cause your problems. No. Come with joy. You are bubbling. I'm not saying fake it. But they are happy. The joy of the Lord is their strength. You are compelled to bless them. Watch the visitors that come to your house. Somebody just comes and knocks. Are you around? Say, please, can I get cold water before I talk to you? You are in a hurry for them to leave. Because you see, let me tell you, depression has a presence. Depression has a presence. Someone can step into your life, kill your joy, close your heavens and walk away. We are going to sing before the Lord for two or three minutes and command some fearful results. Fearful results. Fearful results. Fearful results. But before we get there, I want you to open your mouth and blast in tongues for the next six to seven minutes from the depth of your heart. Lift your voice and pray. Take it, 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 My life is spiritual. My life is spiritual. My life is spiritual. Shabras katabas kebarato shobra na bala na bala na bala. Shekete prakoto sodo bagana bala na bala na bala. My life is spiritual. Katabarata kas kabaya teko sodo bala na bala na bala. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. So take it, take it, take it, take it, bala na bala La kata para tosko para takashe lekete preteketo. My breakthrough is spiritual. My job is spiritual. Aka prata kata para takete. Don't stop. Don't stop. You are aligning your spirit for breakthrough. Shope kete kete kete. Leko to prata kata para na bala na bala na bala na. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray. Listen. You are going to say, Father. Take away any carnal interpretation. I've been interpreting things wrongly. That's why the doors have closed. I thought it was my mother. I thought it was my father. I obtain mercy and forgiveness for blaming people wrongly. Lift your voice and pray. I obtain mercy for wrong interpretation. I obtain mercy. I want you to pray this next prayer point with all your heart. Lord, the spirit of bitterness, anger, 
unforgiveness that has been tying down my next level I cast it from my life lift your voice and pray I cast it from my life I cast it from my destiny pray pray say yeah of triumph it's a year of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Was he praying? Lord, I challenge the spirit of fear and worry. Listen, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you something. These spirits work like twins. Fear and worry. Worry about whether or not you will make it. Worry about whether or not you will get the job. Fear comes and then you start worrying. Will I ever marry? Will I ever have a child? Will I ever do well? They are dangerous spirits. Lift your voice and curse them by the God of heaven. I cause worry. I cause worry. I cause worry. Shake it, shake it, I cause fear. You are of the devil. God has not given me the spirit of fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear. I reject you. I reject you. I reject you from my life. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Listen, hold on, hold on, please. Hold on, hold on, hold on, so that we can make progress. We are going to give God, listen, hold on, please. We are going to give God three. I tell you, if you know the things that are happening in the realm of the spirit, just with this little dance, you dance. Hold on, hold on. (laughs) 
Listen. Believe me when I tell you these mysteries are fearful instruments of deliverance. We are going to give God... Hold on, please. We are going to give God... Listen, hold on, hold on. We are going to give God three shouts, three sets. Hold on. I will direct you. Just three shouts from your heart. I know that it may not make sense to you. But when I say shout, I want you to rejoice. And then the second and then the third shout. You see what happened in Jericho? The walls of Jericho. You will be surprised. Hallelujah. Hold on. Koinonia, hold on. Hold on. Just praise God. Just follow my directives. Some of you will not even be able to shout the third one. Hold on. Are you ready now? Listen. Hold on. Listen. It is not an ordinary shout. There is an anointing upon it. It's a shout of warfare. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe me. Believe me, you will command a level of results that will make you afraid. You are disarming powers beyond your imagination. Are you ready now? Fathers, we obey you. I pray that you honor your name. Put your name upon this shout. Shout number one. Are you ready? Now go ahead and shout. Keep going. Help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. The second shout, listen, that we're about to shout is a shout of strange open doors. Hold on. Strange. Believe what I'm telling you. The anointing of the Spirit is upon me. A shout of strange, strange open doors. Are you ready now? That every closed door must swing open. Go ahead and shout now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbatosh. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen. Listen. Hold on, please. Now, please, just follow me so we can have time. This is what I want you to do. Listen, please. This is what I want you to do. After the third shout, listen to me. After the third shout, worshippers, you just begin to play. I want you to open your mouth and begin to call things. Call things. After the third shout, hold on, hold on. After the third shout, praise God. I know we're all going to be excited, but you try to stop. The moment the third shout is there, just set the atmosphere for us. I want you to begin to call things that be not. Call things that be not. You will be surprised, my brothers and my sisters. Are you ready now? Hold on. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have sent me to open up the eyes of your people. And Lord, I pray, I have done as you have told me to do, and I pray. That you honor this third shout. The Bible says after two days he will revive us. He said but in the third day he will raise us up. 
Lord, let this be a shout of strange triumph. Let this be a shout of strange triumph. Strange triumph. Are we together now? Please make sure after the shout, whether you are under the anointing or open your mouth and speak. Call for things. Are we together? Thank you, Jesus. Are you ready now? Are you ready now? Go ahead and Open your mouth and begin to prophesy. 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 I call it forth. The next level of my destiny. I call it forth. The gift of man. The gift of man. Strange helpers. I call you. Arise for me. Strange anointing. Strange favor. Strange favor. I call you for. I call you for. I call you for. Help from Zion. I call for speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Break through to my life. Break through to my destiny. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Speak. Speak. You are a speaking spirit. Speak. Speak. Every Jericho standing before me. You crumble. Every Jericho standing before me. Every Jericho standing before me. Every Jericho standing before me. I curse you by the God of heaven. I call for strange breakthroughs. Strange breakthroughs. Strange revelations. Strange encounters of the spirit realm. Strange encounters with the world. A new wine. New anointing. New graces. I call for new mantles. New dimensions. Heavier weights of power. Heavier weights of grace. Hallelujah. 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 Fire is burning in this place. Listen. I want us to spare two minutes and rescue our families. Let them tap into this mystery. Begin to prophesy to the gates. And say, I have praised on behalf of my family. I command that devil, you must go. I waste the warfare through my praise. I wish the warfare. Mato soto pakata. Rete kete kete bo soto malabaraba. I command it. Let my family members go. I command it. Cause delay. Cause spiritual lukewarmness. Wicked spirits. Powers. By the mystery of praise, by the mystery of praise, Hallelujah.
for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise I magnify you for the things you have done and the battles you have won on your helpers wherever they are anyone who has the word of prophecy to be your helper I put pressure on their spirits this night and I command them to show up for you 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 I command them to show up for you. Listen. Listen. Hold on. I want you to understand this thing I've been teaching called the gift of men. You've heard me say this thing. Koinonia, I can kneel down and beg you. If you ignore what I'm saying, you will never rise. It's not whether you may rise or not. No helper comes by themselves. They are invoked through mysteries. No helper. Their people are too busy to come just to help you. But after what you have done tonight, oh no. No, come on. Listen. Listen. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Listen. I say it with every sense of humility. Over 80% of the people that sow into this ministry, I don't know them. Some of them are not even koinonia people. I don't know where they are, any part of the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You don't need to know nobody. You just need to know these mysteries. Know them. The mysteries know the people. Are we together now? My only prayer for you this night, and I'm going to keep praying it until I see that result in your life. It says, Strangers shall come and feed your flock. Strangers. Listen, hold on. Many of you have not entered that realm. You have only entered the realm of those who know you, and so for their love, they help you. You have not entered the realm of the ministry of strangers. Listen, when the prophet met with, listen, when the prophet met with Saul, he said, Saul, as you are going, you will meet three men. He didn't say three relatives. Three men, they are holding bread. They will salute you and they will give it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. Men you don't know. Women you don't know. People who don't know you from Adam, they will arise and favor you strangely. They will arise and favor you strangely. I command them to arise and favor you strangely. Hear me. Anyone here or any family that has been in the same position for a long time, no matter you have prayed, you have fasted, nobody moves in your family. It's like the devil has kept them in one place. No job, no joy, no breakthrough in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The same way he said, I set before you an open door. He said, no man can shut. I command the door to your next level, open now. I command the door to your next level, open now. Next level of ministry. Next level of business exploits. Next level of strategic relationships. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are people who must show up in your life. What you need from them is not money. You need their credibility and endorsement. Listen. 
Some of us, our helpers want to come. But our helpers are afraid of us because they have never tested whether we have integrity or not. So they need somebody who has the influence and the charisma, who has vetted you to comment for you. Joseph of Arimathea had to tell, he told Herod, he said, give Jesus to me. You think if the disciples went, they would not lock them up? I will keep drumming this. It's a revelation God gave me for you. You need the ministry of men. All this, I can do it alone. You need help. Oh. Let me tell you, you need help. There are families you need a helper. Everybody that has entered your family caused trouble and destroyed you. Because something called them. Your ignorance called them. Darkness called them. Disobedience called them. Who told you strangers cannot enter and help families? Are we together now? Whoever needs to speak for you where your voice cannot yet go in the name of Jesus this night not tomorrow, this night listen, I decree and declare may your discussion come to the ears of your helpers I command men to talk about you to your helpers I decree it I declare it I decree it. I declare it. I decree it. I declare it. Listen. Hold on. Mordecai was not there when they were talking about him. Mordecai was seated somewhere. Are we together? But when that anointing landed, the king could not sleep. He said, go and bring me the chronicles. Bring me the books. Read them for me. A king could not sleep. And while they were reading it, he heard that Mordecai did something. And he said, hold on. Hold on. This guy did something and nobody helped him. The voice that will command restoration for you. Hear me? The voice that must say, no, this was injustice. Let's go back and correct it. I call for that voice now. I call for that voice now. I call for that voice now. We're rounding up. Tonight's service is a powerful service. Pay attention. Just receive these prayers I'm praying for you. And see what happens. You will now see the difference between you and ordinary men. When you see the results you command, then you will know that there are mysteries in this world. Life is spiritual. Hallelujah. Listen, Paul said, I desire to come to you once and again. He said, but Satan, when the Lord opened my eyes, year before last, I was, I've not shared this with anybody. I saw several people, white men, individuals, several people. And then in that vision, I heard them talking about me. And all of them were in a place like a circle. You know how you use chalk to draw a circle. And the Lord told me, all these are people who have been destined to sow into my life, to bless me, and to announce what God is doing. Come on now. Man, I prayed. Man, I prayed. I prayed. I prayed with my spirit. Let me tell you, when that thing happened, I stepped into a strange level of favor. The ministry of men. There are men blocking you all. There are men blocking your testimony. The moment God wants your helper, an enemy comes before them and says, don't help that girl. She used to be a prostitute last year. But you have repented now. Every enemy standing and speaking to your helper. I'm praying this now. Anyone speaking to your helper so that they don't arise to help you, I curse them by the God of heaven. I curse them by the God of heaven. I curse them by the God of heaven. Hear me. I don't care who they are for as long as their job is to stand and change the minds of your helpers someone wants to marry you before he speaks to you 
a wicked person arises and says, don't, don't go to that jail. I pray. I cost their operation tonight. 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 Hallelujah. I pray for you. The grace to remain ever joyful. The grace to be free from worry. Hear me. If there's anyone here and you don't sleep, simply because the moment you want to sleep, there is a wicked spirit that will bring issues. You have not paid this. You have not done this. Your child's school fees has not been paid. I command that this night will be the best sleep you have had in a long time. Hallelujah. I want you to wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise. Yes, Lord, we give you praise. He said, let my prayers rise to you and the lifting up of my hands like the evening sacrifice. Lord, I wave my hands. We wave our hands to you. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Hallelujah. I want to give you an assignment. Please listen. Listen, from today till next Friday, just do this. It's a simple instruction. From today till next Friday, find any time of the day and dedicate just 10 minutes. Hear me? Sing and dance. Dance before the Lord. Just do it. I know it's seven days. It's not easy. You can do it as a family. You don't have to disturb neighbors. You can just stroll around to one forest somewhere. Just stand behind one tree and dance and watch the God of vengeance. I've been saying this thing, the God of... Let me tell you something. Hear me. Believe me, I speak to you as a servant of God. We declare this week a week of strange vengeance. Strange, strange vengeance. You may not believe it. Where records will be revisited and God will say, no, no, no. This family, since 1998, I destined them to be free. Who kept them? Who kept them? Lord, I pray that you honor this word. That as your people obey these instructions, from this night, Friday, till next week, Friday, let there be strength. Please, do me a favor. I know some of you don't like sharing testimonies, but I would like to share the testimonies. Please. Do that even if it's just because of me. On Friday, once you reach us much to the media, we want to hear the strange testimonies. I know that you have testimonies for other things, but just for this night's service, you will be surprised. You will come back with strange testimonies. Hear me. I pity any man this week that stands in your way as you dance. Except God is not the God of heaven. It has been declared as this week a week of strange results, vengeance. See, that's how to force your destiny to open. You, you play games with your destiny, you will die like a chicken. That's how to deal, that's how to be recession proof. When you force the gates, on Friday you will be surprised to see what will happen to people. Some of you from this night now, as you are going, you will read text messages. Alerts, favors, different kinds of things. Hallelujah. Everyone remain standing except if you are under the anointing. Please just play the strings lightly. You are here and you have not been serious about Jesus Christ. You have heard everything that I have said. And probably you are someone who every time you hear preachers preach like this and you see people jump and shout in any of the overflows, you may... Say, okay, man of God, I understand what you are doing, but I'm not interested. I want to speak to you sincerely from my heart. A great man of God says, you are not safe until you are saved. This is an opportunity for you to make it right with Jesus. You have never given your life to Jesus Christ, or you have even been coming for altar calls. 
But after tonight's teaching, to see that life is spiritual, you are now saying, no, no, I've not taken my life from that angle. And I've had the word of the Lord and I want to make my ways right. Please. You are in the first overflow, overflow across the road. Those online, I want you to rush and come out here and say, man of God, I'm coming here as a sign that I'm not too proud to surrender everything to Jesus. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Make your way. Make your way inside and outside. Don't sit back. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Make this decision before God's people. Please clear the way for them. Ushers, direct them, please. Any of the overflows. You are outside. Make your way through the other door. Those online, I want you to just stay connected. I'm about to pray with you now. Keep clapping. Shame on the devil. Keep clapping. Shame on witches and wizards. Keep clapping. Shame on the powers of darkness. They are coming to Jesus. They are coming to Jesus. Don't be ashamed. Shame on any power that wants to keep you bound. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Those outside, make your way. Double up. Don't allow any friend tell you it's too far. Run and come. You can catch up. You can catch up. He said, you must be born again. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Listen to me. Thank you so much for making this decision. It's the greatest decision. The greatest decision, literally, that you can make. I don't care what you have done. I don't care the way your life has been. When he comes, he makes everything new. Brand new again. Are we together? Lift your right hand and I want you to pray this after me. Be serious and be sincere. Don't tell lies. Don't play games. Be serious before God. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Join them. You are coming. God bless you, sir. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. I believe in you. This night, I have heard your word that life is spiritual. And I've decided to make my life spiritual by handing it over completely to you. Be my Lord and my Savior. I receive your life into my spirit. I declare that from tonight I'm a child of God. The power of darkness is broken over my life. I go forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus. Now keep your hands lifted. Father, these ones are lifting their hands to you. I pray the grace to live a victorious life. I release it upon them. The grace to conquer everything that is three-dimensional, that clamps them down. I supply that strength for them. Holy Spirit, that you reveal yourself in a very strange way to them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you. I bless your destiny. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for this bold decision. Now, I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. All of you this way in concert, just follow him. Give us your correct details. We need it and we'll follow you. God bless you.